hey guys, I'm Ace here, and welcome to the Sif episode of how to use the series which I teach you guys how to use every single item in the Hypex Rubber Shop. In this episode, we're going to be covering the TNT, and in an episode after this one, which will hopefully be in two weeks, but I can't promise anything, it will be on the project. So if you guys enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. Anyways, let's jump right into how to use the TNT. <laughs> Alright, so welcome to how to use the TNT, and if you're new to my channel or not familiar with the series, then I go over the same few categories every single time. So first I go into a brief overview of the item, then I discuss what the item pairs well with, the different tactics you can use with this item, whether offensive, defensive, or evasive. I then go into the ideal placement of the item, if it's a placeable item, what game modes it works well in, the necessity of the item, and lastly I give a overall rating of the item at the very end. So, the TNT is found in the utility section and is the TNT icon. It costs 4 gold in solos and doubles and 8 gold in 3s and 4s. Its lore is instantly ignites, appropriate to explode things. This item pairs well with everything except for the water bucket and the dream defender. Okay, so let's just start off with the basics. This first one is simple. Just right click with a TNT in your hand on or near the opposing bed defense. To go even deeper, there is always a best place to place a TNT down to do the most amount of damage. Place it down on whichever side has the least amount of defense on it. What I mean is, find the side that has the least amount of blocks to where the bed is. Unless the bed defense is one layer, you always want to place it down or the TNT has to destroy as little blocks as possible to expose the bed. A single TNT TNT can take care of up to a 3 block bat defense, so more will be needed if it's thicker. So you've probably seen people do this one a lot in your games, especially if you play solo or doubles. Essentially the idea behind this tactic is to make it very difficult for the opposing team to stop you from destroying their bed, especially if they don't have enough resources or lack the experience. What you can do to pull this off successfully is to build up to a reasonable height, something like 15 blocks, and then build towards the side that you want to place the TNT on. When you get to the point to where you want to drop the TNT, place it on the side of the block you're standing on, and then count to 4 since the TNT takes around four ticks to explode in Hypixel Bed Wars, and keep this fact in mind because it will help you a lot in your games. Once that four ticks is up, jump down as the TNT explodes and claim that bed is yours. If you want to make sure the TNT doesn't stray from the block that you're trying to place it on, place blocks all around the spot that you want to place it in and then drop the TNT from the middle. This makes it so that most people will back off from their bed defense, giving you an opening to get the bed with little compromises. There are some occasions though where things can go wrong, even if the opposing team didn't buy a projectile or use pop-up towers to defend their bed. Look out for people that are building up towards you or coming up below or behind you. Most players that I see struggle with this, especially in any of the team game modes. What I like to do as the defender in this situation is to go below where my opponents originally built up or began staircasing while my teammates sit by the bed defense so then I can sneak up on my opponents and then knock them down or off the map. As the attacker, you need to be vigilant, act fast, and execute the plan with no fuss at all. If you're in a long chase around the map with the person who is a final kill, you can use the TNT as a booster to close the distance between you and your opponent. This move is famously known as the TNT jump, and it can be used for many different scenarios. To pull this off, place down the TNT on a block where you have a clear view of your opponent and where they are going, and then count to 4. And right after the 4th tick, jump in front of the TNT in the direction you would like it to take you. There are ways to go even farther by pulling off a double or triple TNT jump using multiple TNT. These kinds of jumps are more advanced though and require their own little explanation in the ideal placement section. Using this tactic will significantly reduce the gap between you and your opponent. However, be warned that if they check behind themselves and realize what you're doing, they will likely prepare some way to stop you, such as shooting you before the TNC explodes with the fireball or a bow shot to either blast you backwards or off course. If you want to get to an opposing team's bed fast, what you can do is TNT jump to their island when you're within range. I only advise doing this though if the opposing team has left their base since it would only serve to hurt you more than it would help you if you fail. At the cost of the portion of the bridge you're on, you get a first class flight to their base, so be sure to make good use of that time. Destroy that bed as fast as you can using tools or another TNT before the opposing team realizes so that you can have the maximum element of surprise. With perfect timing, you can destroy the bed and get some finals if you can catch them on 
their way back to their base right after destroying their bed. Failing to properly execute this tactic makes it a bit more of a hassle to get to your opponent later on, so make sure to get it right on the first try. This isn't really using your own TNT, but the kind of play I like to do when defending my bed against TNT droppers is to use the TNT that was dropped as a launch pad to get into the hitting range of my opponents so that I can knock them down or off the map before they drop. This tactic doesn't really require you to time the TNT jump since all you basically need to do is to hold down the spacebar while you're sitting in the TNT and then aim for your opponents who are getting ready to jump down. Against people who actually timed their TNT drops though, you most likely don't want to try this tactic on them since it'll be very hard to hit your opponents as they fall when you get launched. This is more for the players who are too patient and wait for their TNT to explode before they jump since they're most likely to sit there for half a second before actually jumping down. You can tell how patient the team is by how much time they take to even place a TNT to drop down. A team that takes a little time to drop their TNT will be more likely to jump down just before the TNT explodes while a team that takes a while to drop the TNT will be more likely to wait for after the TNT explodes to drop down. If you decide to try to build up to your opponent to get them down from the high ground, you can use the TNT to TNT jump to your opponent in an attempt to knock them off their high ground. This works best if they're around 8-10 to 10 blocks away from you horizontally since they would have a hard time stopping you from doing the jump. However, if a team is directly above you or are close enough to your tower, I do not recommend doing this since it's very easy for you to get knocked off your tower and they can just jump down as you try to land on their platform and go for your bed while you are a player down on the fence. If you want to create a large gap between you and your opponent, what you can do is TNT jump away from your opponent to another island or further along a bridge. I only recommend trying this though if you checked behind you already and saw that your opponent is at least 5 seconds behind you so that you're nearly 100% safe when you try to do the TNT jump. If your opponent is closer than that, build a barricade behind you or build up a good few blocks before attempting the TNT jump away. This makes it a lot harder for your opponents to get to you and allows you to have a better chance at clutching the game as long as you make that jump. Be warned of potential projectiles your opponents may have on them though to try and stop you, especially if you're trying to do this in the late game, since most people have an adequate amount of resources available to them at by that time to potentially have a fireball or something. If you're in this situation, try bait out their fireball if you see them stop for a second and look towards you while you're setting up the jump. If your opponent is on the island behind you, what you can do so that you have a chance to catch your breath is to place down TNT behind or below you as you're crossing a destructible bridge to create a gap that your opponents have to take more time to cross. While this does slow your opponent down, I only suggest using this tactic when you absolutely need to get to a shopkeeper ASAP. Blowing up a bridge partially won't stop them for very long, and your TNT would have had better use elsewhere if you don't absolutely need to get to a shopkeeper. I suggest investing some sort of projectile while you're on the island since you can easily kill your opponent while they're building or running along the bridge. A fireball or a bow would serve you well if you can afford either of them since it's pretty much an instant kill if you can land a hit on them on a one block thick bridge. If you usually need to catch a break for a second from your opponent, you can once again utilize the TNT jump to blast you up onto higher ground. I highly advise making sure you, you have enough time to pull off the TNT jump though before actually doing it to make sure that your opponent doesn't ruin it for you. This allows you to have a chance to recover some lost HP and come up with a plan to survive as long as this is executed properly. However, if your opponent begins to build up to you after you pull off this trick or you are already on higher ground from doing something else, what you can do to scare them off potentially is to build up right above them and then drop a TNT down onto them uh, on their tower or staircase. If it's a tower, they will likely panic and jump off or back away from the tower if they are an experienced player. An experienced player will likely try to use a TNT to TNT jump up to you. If you see them start to do this, make as big of a platform as you can above them so that they have a very tough time trying to find the spot where they can actually go up to get to you using the TNT. This can potentially just make them go all the way back down to the ground if they don't manage to get back onto their tower. Against the staircase, there's a chance that if they're building slow enough that you can blast them off with the initial TNT drop, but it honestly depends on the skill of your opponent. A newer player would be most susceptible to this tactic, but an experienced or smart player will quickly catch on and either build straight up the second that they notice the TNT or attempt to use that TNT again to TNT jump up to you on or to another bit of high ground.
We'll start off with a double TNT jump. So the setup for this jump is fairly simple. On a flat bridge, simply place a block above the last block on that bridge and then jump onto the block you just placed. With the setup now complete, turn behind you towards the beginning of the bridge and then place the TNT two blocks away from the block you're standing on. Then jump up and place the second TNT directly below you less than a second later. On a diagonal bridge or area, place a block above the area in which you would like to jump from. Then stand on that block and place the TNT diagonally behind you and then jump and and place another TNT right below you. Remember to begin counting the four right as you place the first TNT, and then jump forward like you would in with a singular TNT jump. As long as everything is timed perfectly, the first TNT should explode, boosting you and your second TNT, then the second TNT would explode not long after and boost you even farther. For a triple TNT jump straight forward, the setup is to go to the end of the bridge just like last time, and then jump up, place a block below you, then build up two blocks behind you facing towards the beginning of the bridge. After that, destroy the second block you placed, and then place a TNT four blocks away from the first block you placed, then another TNT two blocks away from the first block you placed, and the last one should be placed on the, above the third block that you placed. Then just stand on top of the first block and wait for it to all to explode. Diagonally, place a block above the area you wish to jump from, then place two blocks blocks up from the block diagonally below you. Destroy the second block you place, then place the TNT four blocks diagonally away from where your first block is, then another TNT two blocks diagonally away from where your first block is, and finally put your last TNT on top of the third block you place, and then stand on top of the first block you place. The placement of each TNT must be very quick to ensure that the first TNT doesn't blow up before you have everything set up. It works well in all game modes, but I feel that it's more viable in solos and doubles since it's much cheaper and can be utilized much more there since there is way more islands. So in solos and doubles, buying a TNT is very effective throughout the game. Since its cost is relatively cheap, many players use it for their first rush against another team to avoid having to wait for tools. Without TNT, you are at a pretty severe disadvantage compared to players with a TNT. For one, breaking the bed with tools takes much longer than if you had a TNT. Or two, TNT can be used for a lot more than just bed breaking. The only time I feel that tools would be better than TNT is if your opponent has obsidian, then it's obviously TNT can't break obsidian. In threes and Fours, TNT is very much usable, especially for the first rush or for a rush in the late game, but its price tag makes it so much less viable than fast tools since you can get two tier 3 tools for the price of 6 gold compared to a single TNT that would cost you 8 gold. I would only really ever use TNT for evasion in these modes, since that's where it becomes most viable in my opinion. Overall, this item is fantastic and can do a lot of things that will help you throughout your Bedwars games. It's no wonder why it's such a heavy part of the solo and doubles meta and the whole of Hypex of Bedwars in general. If you aren't already using this item in your games, what the hell are you doing? Unless your game mode is 3s or 4s, then TNT should be always something that you think about buying and using throughout every serious game of Hypex of Bedwars that you play. Alright, so that's it for this episode of how to use, and the next one will be on the bridge egg coming in hopefully two weeks, but I can't promise anything again. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to share it with your friends or anyone who may be interested. Alright, that's it for me. Don't stop gaming, guys. Peace out. <laughs>